producer at Tiny Build. All right, I'm here with Carrie Shiro, producer at Tiny Build. We're at PAX East 2017, talking about Tiny Build Studios and everything they brought with them. So we have um, a kind of a big lineup here this year. Um, here on the floor, uh, first and foremost, I'll start with Sweets and Rogue. It's our massive um, roguelike mega game. So what I mean by that is our entry into like the, the roguelike genre for us, we like to find games that say something with them, right? So everyone's got a roguelike right now. There's a lot of really good games out there. We don't need to make another Isaac clone. We want to do something different. So our answer to that was to find kind of a game of massive amounts of long time. So Streets of Rogue launched yesterday, which I think is the 10th, March 10th? Um, yes, yesterday was March 10th. The days are blurring together. So we launched it yesterday. It's actually a free launch weekend on Steam. Actually, 
Andrew Trigger is the one I wrote the press with. That's the neon infused crazy shooter like, of Doom. Yes. Like, I, I almost had a seizure looking at the, the gif you sent out. I was like, <laughs> whoa! Yeah, that one's, um, yeah, we kind of call it like a neon slasher, which is like, it's like neon is a genre now. Uh, but that one's kind of our, our focus on hardcore combat mechanics. So it's actually combo based. And you all unlock and upgrade your combos as you go along. And that one's, um, you know, it's, it's a roguelike, so you'll like that one too as well. I love roguelikes. And we're kind of, it, it kind of looks like Hyper Light Drifter. It's got that art style. But the play style, we're kind of aiming for more of a Devil May Cry. So we'll uh, give that a try. Hyper Light Drifter meets Devil May Cry. That, that'll sell itself. Fantastic. And um, our last one I just mentioned is Graveyard Keeper. Um, this is a Halloween release. release games that are more geared towards adult audiences. Right. So what do you think that that's something that's kind of helped you guys along the way that you're releasing things like, I'll be honest, I got more than a little bit of flack for publishing a review about a game where you just, your objective is to murder people for being loud. Right. I right. mean, you know, that was something that when at the time that, that, that I was with the editor was like, I don't really know that I want to publish the review <laughs> of this game. It's right. violent and scary. Right. And that was shortly after there, you know, there's very violent incidents that occur and so she was like, I don't want to promote this violence. It's, I think it's important this is a game, you know piece of art to show the game, I think, and I love playing the game, not because it's a murder simulator, because it's a fun game. Right. Do you think that's helped you guys in terms of PR and getting out there and it's shaped your image a little bit? It's definitely given us an edge. When we talk about a game, all you have to say is, you don't have to look at party hard, all I have to say is, look, your neighbors are having a party at 3 a.m., go kill everybody at that party, and everyone's like, yeah, I know all about that, I want to try that game, right? Without sight unseen, I want to play that game. Right. And so, it certainly helped us stand out. I wouldn't say, like, that's not why we look for these games. Like, so Tiny Build is made up of majority of Eastern Europeans, right? So it's like, my joke is always like, I feel like there's some deep-rooted anger going on because we've got Party Hard, where you kill everybody at a party. You've got Hello Neighbor, where you sneak into your neighbor's house repeatedly. Now we have Graveyard Keeper, and we have Yonder Day Simulator. And um, I just think we, we like what's off culture. So Punch Club, which is a boxing, you know, back management simulator game, um, still had a lot of like just weird humor about it, right? You go into the, the sewers and you fight turtles and like alligators and stuff. That sort of bizarre Eastern European who humor sticks, sort of sticks underneath the surface there. Absolutely. So um, again, I, I, I guess, you know, it's a, it's a sense of humor we all share internally with the team. For us, design is always still king, so we want games that play really well. So there is kind of an interesting undercurrent of like craziness going on with our games, but it's really just we look for that good gameplay first. Simple, very fun. A lot of not not a lot of a of violence and anger in that game. A little yeah, bit, but not yeah, a lot. Yeah, and I think um, now that I'm a little bit older, it's kind of like I do feel you want to be responsible with the, the stuff that you publish, right? You're publishing, you're promoting a violent game. But also, like when I was a kid, I didn't necessarily notice that type of stuff, you know. And, and it's not to say that they won't notice. There, there's some degree of like desensitization you get, desensitization you get, right? When desensitized, you, yeah. Desensitizing, you get. But. Um, sort of slow development cycle or are you going to be like hard day publisher now uh no no so um and, and, I, and you're a fan of me so you've seen his videos right i've so, watched a, and i've actually interviewed him briefly fantastic so. he's a great guy um he you know if there's one thing you know about him he's very particular he's very uh got very strong uh, ideas about his game and so uh and, and if you go back like years into his videos he always talk about he didn't want to work with a publisher specifically because they're bad. He's mentioned it more than once. They're going to take your money, they're going to make you do things you don't want, and certainly, you know, they can negotiate this deal, all those like, things kind of came up, right? Right. Um, but for us, for Tiny Bolt, we're very largely, we sign games after they already had these demos that are tried and true. So Party Hard, they created that game during uh, the PewDiePie Game Jam, we played it and loved it, and there was still work to be done, but um, it wasn't, we didn't come in and be like, look, you gotta change all these things, you gotta make it this way, you gotta make it that way. 
we iterate with the developers until we find a version that we're all happy with. Ultimately, they're the guys working on it day in and day out. It doesn't make sense for us to come in and start sleeping crap around, right? Um, to put deadlines on. Yeah, I'm big on so, that because I, I think deadlines do a lot of harm to the industry. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually wrote an opinion piece a couple weeks ago about remove, the best thing we could probably ever do for the AAA industry would be to remove deadlines. Yeah. Uh, because right now we're getting a lot of games that aren't finished. And uh, they're not finished because the publisher pushes the developer very hard in the last month to finish the game because they set the release date a year in advance. And when they get there and they haven't made the money, they've been missing milestones for six months. Yeah. And somehow the developer still expects to deliver a product that's finished. Right. And the publisher says, well, if you don't deliver the product, you're going to have this giant fee assessed to your studio. So I think removing deadlines is very good. Right. Yeah. And we, we are, uh, we love what, uh, the, the thing that the, makes this deal really good for Yandere Simulator is that we are able to basically, he can now be the design leader, right? So he can focus on designing all of his systems out, prototyping them actually, and not have to be buried in the code anymore, because now we're going to bring on a development team in house, so we're co-developing it rather than just purely code. Excellent. So you will be assisting him with coding, because I know he's mentioned in the past that he's not the best coder in the world. He's not the, he, he feels like he's not the best coder, and he frankly said, he's like, if I really want to focus on the game itself and the design and the mechanics up with new ideas and coding is really slowing him down to the brain. So we're able to work in parallel so that it does make development is going to go a lot faster. That means when he wants to have uh, some ideas he wants to try out, he can just put them in rapidly and not derail development. Like you've seen if you've seen his videos, he's like, well, I had to put this thing in and then I have to make a vacation and then make a video and so I had two development days this month for actual So he can do all those things and still we'll continue to develop alongside him so we don't Delay things because of oh yeah now he wants to take a vacation like he has heard a vacation in the last right. three years he's been working on this game so we're really excited about that um, I know for us you know like we're obviously the publishers so we're gonna spin the best story like that's the thing it's like what are they spinning what are they spinning but honestly like uh, we, we think we're gonna have a really good experience with all of these developers um, with let's see, Phantom Trigger, Party Hard 2, Graveyard Keeper those are all these um, developers next games with us so that's from the teams that made Punch Club, Party Hard 1. So the fact that they've chosen to work with us again means that it's worked out really well. It's worked out well. It's worked out well. Obviously their games did well for them and they were happy with the way we uh, didn't micromanage them. Right? We really don't. Like that Let's play some games. Yeah.